Sheng, it's all the floor is yours. Thank you, Pat. So, um, my, uh, thanks everybody for attending this session. And my name is Shen Yang. I'm a senior engineer manager now at SUSE. Previously, I work at the Rental Labs, and uh, I'm um, basically drive a few projects like Longhorn Harvester. And before that, you might have heard of some project called Convoy and Local Passport Visioner. So those are uh, in my scope of responsibility. And today I'm here to talk about our newest project um, in uh, one of the newest projects inside the rental lab slash SUSE, which is the Harvester. So first let's bring out to say, why, why do we build the Harvester and why do we do it now? So since we, uh, well, that um, when the Docker start getting popular, uh, like a popular, uh, popular, and then they will, in fact, already many efforts, many attempts to unify the VM management with container management platforms, right? So for the Rancher, Rancher Labs itself started the Rancher VM project very, very early around 2015, and even before I think uh, the Kubernetes became the mainstream orchestrator. So at the time, the Rancher VM was targeting. The, the Docker, using Docker as the one tool to unify to start VMs and in, even inside using the Docker image as the uh, VM repo, VM image repo, to, and also package the small uh, QMU and other components into the VM info so you can have the Docker run command to start VM uh, instantly and using the VNC on the side to access it. So, but that project, we uh, even we do uh, some retrofit at 2018 to make it compatible with the Kubernetes. But later, we uh, basically archive the project at 2019. So, as uh, as the guys you're familiar with the history of uh, what's this uh, virtualization going with Kubernetes and with Docker, you also know that another project called the uh, Virtlet is from Mirantas. The project was started in 2017, but it's um, is aiming to is basically doing a similar thing at the time with Kubevert, but at a different they're doing at a different level. And they want you uh, 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 with that to run as a, a container runtime interface at CI, and uh, they um, aiming to solve the uh, problem at that level. But this project is also being inactive since 2019. So finally, we have a uh, Kubert. Uh, Kubert, we all know that's originally coming from Red Hat, has now is uh, uh, donated, Red Hat donated to the CNCF and is a CNCF sandbox. And of course, it's a topic we're talking about here. So the Kubert, in fact, is uh, going much better and, uh, and much stronger than other projects. The main reason is, I think, is uh, because the, the Big, big, uh, Kubevert is rooted on the Kubernetes and the Kubernetes, the popularity of the Kubernetes come up and we all see the function as uh, for the Kubernetes as a single orchestration platform. Even we can like, if we can like orchestrate VM on top of that, it will be very big uh, gain for the reduced complexity on the say, you have to operate VM and the, the container separately and that's just, uh, what Kubert I think has gained a lot, lot more popularity and st still like getting very strong those days, and so that's why we also have the Kubert first Kubert summit here. So, but if you take a look back, say how big is the virtualization, uh, virtualization market, especially as say virtualization for the on-premises hardware, and to see the revenue of the VMware Nutonix compared to how big those uh, um, we think the, the market of Kubernetes is, it's definitely not as big as the which on premises of virtualization. And, uh, and also as only a subset of the community of the users using Kubernetes using Kubeverge. But they are probably simultaneously using the product from VMware, from Nutonix, right? To hosting the uh, virtual machine, to hosting the uh, the virtual machines that's running the Kubernetes nodes. So if we look at it in that way, it's still a very, very big difference between how much we have achieved so far in the market share compared to what has been like been there for the VMware and the Nutanix. So the, the last year, the Nutanix, the Nutanix revenue is about 1 billion something, and the VMware revenue, I think, is about 16 billion or something. 
which is uh, very, very big, like probably 10 or 100 times bigger than the entire uh, Kubernetes market. And, but, they, but those people using VMware and Nutanix, they are not really switching. Like, of course, some of them switch to the Kubernetes and maybe start using Kubert. But most of them are not doing, haven't, doing that, haven't done that yet. So why? Why is that? So why there's so big difference in the market there? So one thing we think is because of there's no like really open source alternative to the commercial HCI. So if the user want to get a very unified experience and they have to go to the VMware. And of course, there's another product you might have seen here is the OpenStack, which is for the last uh, few years before the Kubernetes become mainstream, there's a lot of lots big companies pouring tens of money into trying to make OpenStack the de facto standard for the um, uh, VM orchestration on the on the on premises. But that's, as you know, doesn't work out. So that's a lot of resources. We think that there's a lot of resources spent on that. And uh, that's and also um, basically means that the resource has diverted from like create a new open source alternative for the commercial HCI, which can compete at the same playground with VMware and Nutanix. You might also um, know that there's another open source HCI solution out there called Promux. And yes, it's open source and it's, uh, it's HCI solution, but the, the market share of what Promux have is really not really compatible for the VMware or the Nutanix or um, um, to the extent of what the, even, even OpenStack is not really successful, it has still have a lot of market share there. So, Another issue we saw is um, why those VM admins doesn't switch to the Kubernetes is because of some well-known aspect of Kubernetes is hard. And VM admins, they are comfortable with their own set of terminologies like disk, VLAN, ISO images. But when they switch to Kubernetes, they have to deal with different kinds of terminologies. And all those and PV, PVC, storage class, pods, CRDs, each of them has a, like different caveats, different things, different um, uh, say quicks you need to um, understand, right? So that is a big learning curve. It's very steep learning curve for the users to use Kubernetes. So we think that may be one, uh, another major reason that there's no uh, really mass, in, in mass, um, uh, transition to the Kubernetes with, uh, for example, with uh, Kubernetes. And that's the one reason we think why we want to try this and see if the harvester will be the product to fill that gap. So we create harvester and harvester is by definition an open source hyperconverged infrastructure software. So harvester's position is directly competing with VMware vSphere and Nutanix. And uh, when you think about what vSphere and the Nutanix do, they, when we, you, you have an ISO, right? So if you want to install that GSI server, you have the ISO installed on the, on the disk and on, on your bare metal machine. And you boot up, you see the screen and you know where to access it, or you create a vCenter to connect to those nodes, right? So it's a pretty much different from what we have right now on the, on Kubernetes is uh, you uh, run a bunch of scripts and using either Kubernetes or RK or P3S and you do that manually, you, you bring up the cluster and then they use the um, uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes components or probably some CNI components or some storage as well. So we were, the purpose of the harvester is we wanted to be the easiest way for you, for the end user to get HDR up and running on the bare metal servers, it should be as easy as how you're going to install a VMware ESX server or how you install a Nutanix server, right? So that's the one goal, and that is the part that we spend a lot of efforts on. So on another side, because Harvester in essentially is still a cloud native software, so you can deploy Harvester as a help chart on the existing Kubernetes cluster, but of course that cluster need to have the virtualization support on every single node of it, right? So in fact, uh, this way of deployments as Helm chart directly is pretty complicated, has a lot of restraint, uh, restraints, like say you have to have a certain version 
um, of Longhorn or don't have Longhorn installed or don't and also don't have Cobalt installed because the harvest itself is going to patch up a certain version, which is we make sure that's certified and compatible with the harvest that that version to your Kubernetes cluster. So in fact, we uh, in the future, we still like going to refer this way of deploying Helm chart is most likely going to be the app mode or the developer mode. And when you, we can still envision that when you run the production environment, production workload on the harvester is still recommended to use HCI mode. And it's probably the going to be the only mode to run in production we're going to support in the future to just minimize the support and the, the variety of the uh, your environment uh, um, problems to minimize the problem we, you might have with the harvester. So harvester, another very important aspect of the harvester is harvester, of course, is based on several Kubernetes related technologies, but we are designing this product project to be a uh, really require no Kubernetes, Kubernetes knowledge to operate. Right. So this is one part we also spend a lot of time to um, converting the Kubernetes, uh, the, the, the terminologies and also supporting, as you can see in the next slide here, we're supporting VLAN networking, which is probably basically unheard of in, in the Kubernetes native world. And uh, we also have in the MOTAS, which is allow you to um, have the two different NICs on the same VMs. And the one is connecting to what we call the management networking, which in fact is the Kubernetes overlay networking. Another one is, of course, the VR networking. We are also aiming to add more uh, networking plugins, CNIs in the future. But it's going to be one overlay, another one is like some type of layer three or layer two uh, networking plugins. So what can Harvester do right now? Of course, VM lifecycle management, that's the, that's the key components of Harvester Kubert is doing. And you can do the uh, VM create division stop restart in the Harvester UI. And we support SST key injection cloud init. And those of course is just exposed by the Kubert. And uh, we also provide the graphics console and the serial port console in our UI as well for the user to have a very easy access to the, uh, to the VMs. Right, so we uh, Harvest also has a distributed block storage, which is powered by Longhorn underneath. It's highly available, and uh, in the zero dot one release, we are still expose it as like a fail as fail system mode. But in the zero dot two release, which is upcoming the next month, we're going to expose it as a raw block device, which is, should like um, increase the performance as well. So networking, I've talked about that before. And also at this moment, we also mm -hmm. has a building image repository, which is powered by the Minion. So in the Harvester, you can add in any new images into your Harvester cluster, and we are going to download that image into the Minion running inside Harvester, also in the h mode. And once you start starting VMs, the VM will put the image from the Minion instead of like directly from the internet. So you can think about Minion it's more going to be a, like a building cluster level cache to help to speed up uh, the starting of the VMs. All right, so this is the really the very general um, uh, architecture of the, what the Harvester looks like. Um, here we are of course assuming that you are deploying Harvester in HCI mode. And we have two nodes here. And on top of that, you see that we're running on the K3 OS, which is the light, uh, light OS distribution of running like a K3S natively. So in fact, those on top of that, we are going to run Longhorn and Kubert both de deploy on top of the Kubernetes. So and uh, um, Minion is also there for to support the image pool, uh, the image management for the whole cluster. And that each VM, we're going to have choices to connect it to the management networking or and, and to one of the VLANs. And that is uh, to achieve the VM isolation at VLAN level. So uh, in fact, in this um, picture, one component might be gone in the future is the, well, not gone, but to replace in the future is the K3OS. So as you know that now the rental lab has merged with the SUSE, so we are looking to see that what should be our unified approach for the uh, lightweighted container-based or 
um, Kubernetes specific uh, operation system there. So that is one part we might uh, we still haven't um, find out uh, decided yet. But that's uh, but before the GA, uh, it's very likely the case DOS part we're going to be replaced by something like we can um, better support it in the context of that uh, the, the SUSE operation system or the SUSE rancher something combined operation system. All right. So let's jump to a very quick demo. OK, so I saw a question asking uh, from Christian, say, can Harvester provision KVM CP GPUs? Currently, no. But it's, in fact, it's um, one thing we, are, uh, we want to do. Since the Harvester itself is integrated with the Kubevert very well, so we do um, once the covert has the features I think already have the, to to provision the KVM GPUs the harvester in harvester side we can also add that and and also we probably need to like more wrapping around that to to improve the user uh, user experience. All right, let me switch to my demo environment. All right, can you see my screen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we're ready. All right, uh, can you see my screen? Someone can give me a thumbs up or something in the chart? Okay, thank you. All right, so this is the uh, Harvest UI when you first install it. And the, when you see the dashboard, you can see the overview of your host, the uh, virtual machines, and everything here. And when you go to the host, you can see that those are two harvest nodes. And this is, in fact, provisioned by the SCI. OK, so I saw another question say, how do you handle SCD consistent with only two nodes? That is, uh, we, when you have only two nodes, we only provide, I mean, one of them is going to be the, the management node, of course, is um, not going to be highly available. So two nodes cluster is not going to be highly available. You have to have at least three nodes cluster to make sure everything is consistent and highly available. All right, so, oh, what is going on here? Okay, I think that there's some casual stuff. Right, so on the virtual machine page, you can see what virtual machines we have uh, running right now. So now we are running uh, Ubuntu and we can take a look what the console looks like. Wow, it seems it's starting. Yeah, but in fact it's not because uh, this version of Ubuntu somehow decided to ship all of this uh, information through the serial console instead of VNC, instead of like a graphics console. So you can also con con connect to this Ubuntu machine using the serial. So let me just re -log in. So you can see this is the, in fact, we are con connect to this virtual machine using TTY S0. And you can see the, the IP address. And this machine is uh, configured with two networks. And the one is on the 10.0 network, which is the, in fact, bridge into the uh, Kubernetes overlay networking, and otherwise 172.16.91.a network network is located on the VLAN 91, and this is the, in our data center. So I can start, uh, in fact, before that, let's take a look at how we download images. So you can see we have two images here, and that's this, um, one is the focal, of course, it's Ubuntu, another one is K3 OS, but how do you download a new image? Let's try to, Search for one to cloud image, and we are going to try to download another one. So this is 1804 LTS. I'm trying, just going to find the IMG file here, and I'm going to create a new image. Oh no, this is wrong. I need the URL. Copy link address. Yes, and when you click create here. And this image will be downloaded into the disk and then uploaded to our S3, like computing minion S3 
cache layer for the image repo. So this is doing the uploading uh, right now. So once it's down, we can uh, start it just from this UI. So this is the bottleneck, right? Yeah. So for this one, we don't. Uh, I think we still need to. Oh, yeah. We need to set up the cloud image to make sure we have the right password and can log in after. Oh, this is the network. And in the meantime, I'm going to start another VM. It's a different VLAN networking. So on the network side, you can add another network with uh, 92 VLAN. And I also need to set up the cloud init. And on the network side, I'm going to ask for DHCP on both sides. Let me create this as well. So while those two VM are creating, I can show you how the harvester is supposed to be installed in HDI mode. And here we have a um, IPMI access to one of our machines in our data center. This is, of course, a private VPN connect to our data center. So I have this is the Bellmental Dell PowerEdge R630 machine, and I have already preloaded the Harvest ISO into this. So you can see that when you boot up, you are going to see the harvest installer. And now I could just go um, to start the installation process for this installer. When you use down, you can see a, a kind of installation wizard to help you to guide you through how to install harvester. And either you can start a new cluster or join an existing cluster. So we can take a look at that later. So let's go back to... Okay, so Ubuntu test is currently running, and as you might remember, this is running on the, yes, 18.04, so it's already started. So let me see. So now you can see this one still, uh, this one already has like IP and everything connect. Correctly, yeah. So I saw a question asking uh, from me how. So does the live migration works with the long-run backing storage? Yes. So currently, the, for the zero point one release, it doesn't work yet. For the but we're aiming to get that work with the zero point two release, even with the Roblox UI support. Yes. So on the ninety two dot one. So let's see. I think this one doesn't have a console as well. So it's, I'm going to the serial console and okay, I'm going to serial console for this one. Yeah. Now, in fact, you can see a little bit of the boot up uh, boot up uh, process here and see the chain uh, has the. Uh, configured IP, uh, the cloud image here, actually route. I'm going to, I need to delete the default route for the management networking in order to show this demo. So I'm going to route through another way. So IP route looks good right now. And you can see that uh, this one, the, um, the VM on the right, you can see the screen. Do you, can, can you see the screen on the VM on the right? Can somebody give me a thumbs up on the chart? because I'm sharing a desktop instead of window. Okay, sorry, might be a bit slow. All right, so you can, uh, you can see on the left side, we have IP address of 91.8. On the right side, we have IP address of 92.7, which means that in fact, coming from different VLANs, in fact, let me check on this one. Oh, this rock is good. So I can, so from this one, I am not able to ping. Uh, first, of course, I make sure that I can reach the gateway. So, but I won't able to ping another VM 
because they are isolated by the VLAN. But of course, for this VM, we have to also ping the gateway to make sure this is in fact the network itself is working, but it's not. Uh, but it's uh, not. Uh, um, uh, it's isolated. The network itself is working, but it's isolated by the two LAN, uh, two VLAN on the layer two level. Right. So that is the quick demo. And uh, back to our installation. Yeah. Now the, the Harvest Installer has been boot up, and you can choose to create a new Harvest cluster or join an existing Harvest cluster here. And we are going to join the existing cluster. And I have to make sure I get this IP address right. So what's the IP address for the for the main for for the cluster is sixteen dot dot forty one. So token is like a password for you to join this cluster. And you can set up password in order for you to gain to the root access once you put up your machine. And we don't need edge, uh, um, and then we don't need a proxy. And we can um, harvester can choose which NIC you are going to use as your management network, and it's going to be the NIC four, which is on the tension networking. And now this harvester node is starting storing, and what it's do is installing case OS on the node. And then um, uh, copy the necessary components. And basically, we have a packaging all the uh, version specific covert, longhorn, motors, everything into, uh, into that disk, into the root disk. And then, and then when we started, we just deployed the helm chart um, and the necessary components into, into the system. So that that's concludes my demo. So, yes. So let me go back to my slide. It's a little bit more have been. All right. So I hope you can see my slide. Yeah. So there are a few issues we have encountered when developing harvesters. One is. Um, Regarding the CDI, because currently how CDI works is uh, they are like, of course, it's very general purposes and you can create PV, CDI can create PVPVC and copy the image into it. And those, but the first thing we notice that CDI doesn't work well with raw image because you will tend to like copy the whole data of the, um, you want to, for example, if this QCOP file is only one gigabyte, but the QCOP file size, like the volume size is 10 gigabyte, CDI were going to copy the 10 gigabytes data into the raw image, which makes it very, very slow for the boot up. So, and another thing is um, because we are, in order to speed up the boot up process, we're thinking have some like a backing image feature, which is like, because we're using Longhorn there and we also have control over the Longhorn components. We can have a Longhorn using certain VM, certain VM image as the backing image. And then, so every VM, Every copy of that VM image is only going to be like a seal uh, copy on right on top of that, just like what the Docker image layer was due. But that is not going to be um, at least for now. We don't find a we cannot find a way to get that work with CDI. So in the future, we might able to just like walk around the CDI and see. And we haven't made a decision yet. But that's the part that we found CDI is not really very efficient on um, uh, maintaining the copies and those. Another one is uh, we are also thinking, we're also checking with the Kubert upstream community and, and looking forward to the Kubert GA in order to like better support it, uh, Kubert in this sense. So very brief roadmap here and for the next version, um, I think some audience already asked about live migration. Yes, it will be supported. And we are going to support VM image backup restore and zero downtime upgrade and the PXE boot. So uh, once we have the PS boot, we should able to you should able to run the harvester in the environment like uh, Equinix Metal, and uh, then you may, if you don't have the access to environmental nodes, and you might able to do it on the cloud providers. And the harvester zero dot three, we are going to have the image export feature and the VM image snapshot revert and the future for the future plans. We're also planning to replace the K three OS as I mentioned before. Sorry, I think I'm running a little bit late. That's all of my slides. 
So any questions? You have a bunch of questions. Um, so let me go ahead and take them in order. You are the last talk of the day. So we're going to take all of these questions <laughs> in overtime. Uh, thank for you. people who are not hanging out, hanging around for the questions, um, thank you very much for attending today and we will have a full day tomorrow. Um, so first question from Christian, can Harvester provision KVM GPUs? Yeah, so currently we haven't added that yet, but I can I imagine that should be uh, pretty straightforward since the I think he already got confirmed from Wazadik that uh, the Cooper already support GPU. So yes, we should be able to add that. Okay. Peter wants to know, how do you handle ETCD consistency with only two nodes? Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned before, the SCD doesn't really have consistency with two nodes. So in order to have a highly available harvest cluster, you have at least to have like three nodes, right? So of course, if you go beyond three nodes, the consist the, the, SCD, the actual, um, actual feature will be there. But if you only have two nodes, if you somehow bring down the master node for the SAD, well, not, not really anything can be guaranteed there, yes. Okay. Um, Mihai uh, wants to know why VM migration work with Longhorn as backing storage. Yes. So in fact, a, a little bit more into that, we, um, on the Longhorn side, we are doing something special in the case of you want to do the VM live migration and the, even is a roadblock device and Longhorn supposed to be read read once. If you are wanting to do the live migration, Longhorn can still do that. Just given that you are having the data writing, for example, you have two nodes. Once you stop writing the date, we can have the Longhorn attached to the both nodes. One is node A, which is your source for the migration. Another one is B, which is your target for the migration. As long as you don't write any data when start writing. So live migration process will be like, I write data to the A and then pause for birth moment. And then I start switching everything to the node B, right? So for that moment, as long as that you don't come back to writing, say you write in node A and then write to node B and then come back to write to node A, as long as that doesn't happen. In fact, Longhorns on the block level going to still support it. So that is how we are going to support the line migration. So by exposing two roadblock device on um, two different nodes, but make sure, but the user need to make sure that they are not going to write data back and forth. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll take a question from Tal and then another follow-up question from Mihai. Mihai, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. So Tal wants to know, uh, I have Rancher HA up and running. Can I somehow use Harvest with the Harvester UI only to provision VM and VMI? Yeah, so I think what you mentioned here is what we call the uh, dev mode or app mode. Um, in theory, you can because Harvest is just deployed as a bunch of Helm chart and uh, you can do that from, for example, Rancher Harvester uh, branch 0.1 and uh, you can get it up and running. Of course, but first you need to make sure you're on a bare metal node. And the second thing is, in fact, there's very big restriction there. You cannot have the Kubert installed and you cannot have the Longhorn or any Harvest component installed. It's going to be uh, very limited. So currently Harvest wasn't uh, really designed to be running, say inside an existing uh, Rancher HA setup Yet, but in the future, what we have in mind is you can have a harvest cluster and you can import that cluster to a rancher, like just to a rancher setup, just like how you import a normal Kubernetes clusters. So that should be giving you a little bit of um, way to like operate in containers on top of the harvester, but the harvest itself um, may, uh, may still like only deal with the which, like, which machines because for example, if you have a pod, you basically have very, so how pod consume resource can vary. But when you have virtual machines, every time normally say, I give this virtual machine one core and it's better you really give it one core, right? So that's a 
that's a little bit different. And we want to make sure that we, on the hardware side, we are counting correctly for all the resources can be run, running by other work, workloads other than the VMs if you want to mix the workloads together. So that's a, so in the future, what we envision at this for the moment, you know, branch labs, things changed like fairly frequently, but at least for the moment, what we want to have is um, you still need to have a dedicated harvest cluster, but you might able to like import that to the, your ranchers. And even we are considering that, can we, do we allow to harvest to like bundled with rancher single cluster UI? But that is also another thing to talk about. Okay, there's a follow-up um, uh, from Mihai, but it's complicated, and I've pinged you both on Slack um, so that you can continue the discussion there. Um, so thank you very much. And Pep, over to you. Yeah, just a quick question. What, uh, now that you mentioned Slack, there was a quick one. Hopefully, uh, um, from the containerized data importer team, CDI, if, just a clarification, I, uh, if you are currently using CDI or not. Yeah, so currently, uh, um, as in 0 0.1, we're still using the CDI because CDI can handle the volume resizing and the copy the image and those stuff. But for the 0 0.2, we are considering like removing the dependency on the CDI. Yeah, but it hasn't finalized yet. Okay. Um, thanks. So. Thank you. Thank you, Pep. Thank you, Josh. No, thank you. Uh, 